Hi, welcome back on our Datalite Neo range. We're very honored to have this huge demand that we have seen globally. And the good news is we're shipping, we're stocking, so they're available instantly if you need them for your next project. After the introduction last time, we try to talk today a little bit more elaborate about individual topics. Just before we now shipping, we released the latest firmware update. The good news is, ideally, we expect this to be the last firmware update. We're talking about mono or bicolor systems, so we don't see the huge need of having constant user updates for the firmware. That's why the update can only be done by trained people through RDM, which means for our local customers, yes, sure, they can come to Munich, they can send the units. For international customers, go to your local agent. For bigger rental houses, it's not a secret. We're going to train you, we're going to train you online how to do the updates, but all the units that you have should have firmware number five on them. So if you want to check which firmware is on your unit, you just go into the menu, to the info mode, and you're going to see on this unit, we already got the shipping version, which is firmware number five. Some of you who might have the old version, see number four. No problem to use it, we just added features. We did not do any dramatic changes on controls. One of the key features which I needed for myself in a big studio project where I was hiding the ballast and accidentally changed the DMX addressing is the lock function. So today, if you press the menu button for a little bit, you're gonna go in the lock screen itself. If you have the preset of the screen to be blackout after a couple of seconds, it would black out. Once you hit a button, it would remind you you're still in the lock mode. All the control by cable or wireless would still work as expected. To unlock, you hit the menu button for a couple of seconds and you're free to control your light as you used to. One of the requests which you implemented in the latest firmware was actually the accuracy of the bicolor units when changing the color temperature, where we thought originally for the main use, you would set your color temperature to a certain level, look visually, and if it's okay, you just leave it. You would never look on the screen itself. But today with LEDs, customers want the exact value and repeat the exact value. So we decided to improve it as good as we can, taking into account we're still using mono or bicolor LEDs, which have a binning, which means it's a range of color temperature. So we agreed to build an average level. All of our electronics after manufacturing are now calibrated. Since each component has small variances, we need to make sure that the current coming out to the light head is as stable as it can be. And I think we achieved something which is a reference in our industry. So nothing for you that you need to do, just update the firmware and you have the improved color accuracy over the dimming range and over the full range of color temperature. Talk a little bit about the high speed mode which we have, which we had a lot of discussions whether we need to keep it inside because we're totally safe on all the commercial high speed frames. We tested with a colleague and the Phantom on the regular frame rates which we would use for commercial work. And since we use a high frequency driver with a filter on top, we are actually flicker free up to 2000 frames, 10,000 frames. So in linear and exponential mode, you do not need to worry about flicker at all on your regular high speed rates. But if you talk about scientific work, we kept the high speed mode inside, which would take the light itself to be 100% on, and we limited the color temperature range because on, on scientific high speed, most of the time you're not shooting color, so you want intensity, intensity, intensity. Let me talk a little bit about our linear and exponential dimming functionality, where we think for most of our user groups, the linear would be the curve to go to. And that's why if you do a factory reset, it always will take you back to the linear mode where you have a perfect linear line which takes you 50% as 50% intensity. Which if you have static light or don't need the deep dimming on the lower end is perfect. But for everybody coming from a lighting design side where they want a live dim from black, the exponential curve shows an increased quality. We call it theatrical dimming because you come from black and really slide into your illumination level. And this today is reference. I didn't see any other light in all the professions I work in which is as good as we are today. 
Um, to achieve this, we calibrated the electronics for each LED that we use. So the 20 watt, the 40 watt, the 80 watt would have different presets. I want to highlight why we chose to use the TIMU2 module instead of the singular TIMU module. TIMU2 features wireless control, wire CMX, cognitive radio multiplex, and Bluetooth. CMX has proven over the years to be the standard in entertainment industries and in our image capturing crafts. Bluetooth would be the preferred choice for an individual cameraman who has two or three, just a few lights. It's quite tricky to set up a CMX system, but the trick on the Timo 2 module, it's the entry point into the CMX world. So for people who want to work with the Blackout app and don't want to invest in additional hardware infrastructure, you use the first Neo inline wire Bluetooth to then be your transmitter in a CMX environment. And we're gonna show you some of the individual steps in a moment. On the Bluetooth control, soon we will be able to offer the partnership with Prolicht and the Chromalink app, which means all of the modern bicolor NEOs can be used in the ecosystem, which most of you would already know and appreciate. I believe most of you have read it and maybe have understood it. Our new driver, DT NEO and DT NEO Plus, will drive 34 different data light LED light heads, which means the light head will be detected by the electronic, the currents will be adjusted, and the low and dimming points will be preset. So if you start with one system, you just can add the light heads according to your project and scale it up or scale it down, which is unique. The mechanics of the housing of the new NEO system allow you several mounting options. So the easiest running gun is just to slide out the little yoke and hang it on a tripod or whatever is available as true in the wall. All our sets will be shipping with this little V-mount adapter which slides into our mounting rail and just locks firmly and became a standard in all the EMG workflows. Through this rail you can add a lot of different mounting options, whether it's a quarter inch thread, a three quarter thread, a belt mount to mount it on a rig quite easily. And with this rail, you have the option to do your own mounts quite freely as well. As a lighting designer, I want to add my thoughts on the optical benefits of using a mono or bicolor LED system as we see it in the Daedalite Neo range and the multicolor system that we see in the Daedalite Neo color range. Optically, we always need a pointed light source and whoever remembers our classic historic light, it was a pointed low voltage bulb. To replace it, ideally we want a pointed light source. With LEDs, the more wattage or lumen we want, we need an array of LEDs, so it virtually becomes just bigger. That's why the monocolor system is always optically preferable, because we got the smallest packaging. A 70 watt array mono would always be half the size of the bicolor, where we have twice the amount of LEDs. In return, the shadow edge of the monocolor is always slightly better, and that's something you see and feel, and the spot performance increased on the monocolor. In many situations, I don't see the huge demand on lighting traditional studios with multicolors, because I have a fixed setting where most of the time monocolor systems would be perfect, and if I want a U, I'm still a fan of gelling it. If, however, you're in the creative demand of having the increased color space, if you need live color blends, the new tool of the Daedalite Neo Color System offers you artistic benefits which were undreamed of before. And we're gonna share some of our ideas in a separate range of videos. I'm gonna show you how to set the Timo 2 module in our unit number one to the Bluetooth mode and into transmitting via CMX. We're gonna use the CMX Toolbox, which is a free app. We connect after enabling Bluetooth on the first unit to unit number one, which we're gonna find showing up as a DTN plus. We press connect device. It will then ask for the password, which is 089, 089. If you didn't do a change of the password, you will reset it if you do a factory reset to original Munich phone code. 
On the device, in device setting, I can change from receiving, which is our standard preset, to transmitting. And I also could change the password. After hitting save setting, they're being enabled. And to start the linking process, I need to do it via the app by hitting link. So now the device is open for linking and I can connect device number two, three, four, five, all the ones in the daisy chain via CMX. So we connected our electronic number one via Bluetooth to the blackout app on the iPad. And unit number one, we set in the transmitting mode and connected it to unit number two and the ones following as CMX fixtures. So after patching in the, in the software, I have control of the individual units after addressing the DMX channel intensity and color temperature. And to show you visually the difference between linear and exponential mode, I set up three looks. The look number zero is always the blackout and I'm driving both units in the same time to 50% now. And you can see how the unit on the left side, which is in linear mode, kicks in much, much earlier than the unit on the right. And we continue to 100% and you're gonna see the impression that the unit on the left side is hitting 100% much earlier. Also, we had 80, 90 and 100 right now. So you have much more control of subtle lower and dimming on the exponential curve, but this depends on how you're gonna use it, whether you really need the extended control on the lower end or you need the linear mode um, to control it. But the Timo 2 enables us to, without any additional tool, to have the iPod control unit number one via Bluetooth and then go into the CMX ecosystem.